This is the third and a half video in a series about Latin. Uh, this video is about materials that more advanced students are going to be interested in for their use. Um, in front of the camera right now is Gildersleeve's Latin Grammar. Um, this is a reprint of a 19th century reference grammar and it's very thorough as you can see from its brick-like thickness. And it's just a reference grammar as you can see a list of verb forms, conjugations of irregular verbs, discussion of the syntax of verbs, discussion of uses of the various tenses, discussions of the various uses of the genitive case, and it's all very very thorough. It quotes Latin, various Latin authors from antiquity to make the point. And it goes on and on and on and on about many subjects. It's a complete index, and this is a reference grammar, and I think that most advanced students of Latin should own one of these. Um, there are several out there. Gildersleeve's Latin Grammar is one. Bennett's New Latin Grammar is another. As you can see, it's much smaller. It's a much quicker reference, but it's the same idea. It's the same idea. Tables of conjugation and principal parts. Haha, -ha, you just saw my daughter's hand. Um, same sort of idea. The, the other tool that every, that every advanced Latin student is going to need is some sort of a dictionary. Um, I suppose it doesn't really matter which one you use. Um, the one I'm showing you here is the, Pox, the Pocket Oxford Latin Dictionary, or as I wanted to say, Poxford. Um, there's the giant serious Oxford Latin Dictionary, and it's really big. Um, but I think for most students, most of the time, um, a dictionary like this is going to be of sufficient use. Um, make sure when you get a dictionary, um, that it includes all of the macrons on the Latin to English or Latin to whatever language you are looking for. Make sure it includes the macrons on the Latin side. Um, this dictionary is divided in Latin and English, and then in the back it goes English into Latin where the macrons are not on the Latin. So if you are using the English to Latin half and you need to know the macrons, you've got to go look on the other side. Um, there are also some forms for reference poked in there, as most Latin dictionaries are going to have. Um, I don't know what to tell you. A lot of people like various dictionaries. I like the Pocket Oxford because it's got some pretty bold printing on decent quality paper, and I've discovered that when the light is not so good, my eyes are getting a little old, and it's, it was kind of a tough discovery for me. Um, but really, any of them in the $10 to $15 range will do the trick. This is the Horace Legamas Transitional Reader. Um, this is designed for students who are coming to unadapted Latin literature for the first time, and I like the Legamas series particularly because it deals with, for the most part, poets. And poetry in any language that is not your own is hard to read, and you need practice. And I like the format of this because what it does, and it's kind of hard to see here, what it's going to do is it's going to show an adapted version of the Latin text, an adapted version of the Latin text, and it's going to use various type cues to show what sorts of things go together, and that's really handy for beginning students. It's going to give you some vocabulary and notes, but the type cues on the simplified Latin text are really good, so then students can go through and get a handle for what's what and what's where. And then after they've done that, they can go read the original as, they say, what Horace actually wrote. And I think that's a nice way to introduce students to 
the real deal, especially with poetry where there's so much going on in Latin as compared to just say colloquial spoken English. Working the camera here is a book called A Seneca Reader. This is from the Bolchesi Carducci Latin Reader series. Um, and this is really pretty typical of intermediate to advanced Latin readers. Um, you will have a large introduction in English. This one happens to be about Seneca, and it talks about Seneca's writing and Seneca's life and Stoic philosophy, his, some of his stylistic tendencies, and it goes on for rather a few pages. And then you jump into the text of what Seneca wrote. This one has all the text on one page with the notes in back. So you're always kind of flipping back and forth. Some of them, and I'll show you a different version of this sort of thing, have the notes and the text on the same page. Then at the back there are various appendices about poetic meter and a vocabulary. Um, and this is designed for students who are just reading you know, they're learning how to read their reading texts and classes is not for serious scholarship, but for classroom. I mean, I suppose you could use it for scholarship, but for the most part, this is meant to be a classroom text. This is Farzanian, and it's kind of a famous edition of the Aeneid for English-speaking audiences. And it's much the same as the last book I showed you. However, on its text pages, what you see is here's some of the text of the Aeneid, here is some vocabulary help, and here are some notes to help you make sense of what you're reading, which is different in that everything is on the same page for you. This is a pretty typical format for um, this style of reader. Um, this covers the first six books of the Aeneid, and it, and it contains in its appendix um, a pretty complete Latin reference grammar, so you don't need something like Gildersleeve or Bennett to get you through. You can just use this one book. It's kind of an all-in-one, one-stop. There's an index to the grammatical index. Oh, just wonderful. High-frequency vocabulary list. And in the back... is a pullout of all the high frequency words that Virgil uses. So really you shouldn't need to flip off of the page. It should all be sitting there right in front of you. And that's far as a need, which is typical of this style of Latin reader. There's a third kind, and the one I'm going to show you is from the Itati Renaissance Library. Um, this one happens to be um, Pope Pius II's commentaries, which is cool because he's the only pope who um, wrote his memoirs while he was pope. Um, and this is from the Itati Renaissance Library, which is put out by Harvard University Press, who also puts out the Loeb series, L-O-E-B. The red books are Latin, the green ones are English, uh, the green ones are Greek. And the feature of this that's important for us is that on one side it's Latin and on the other side it's English. This is really, I suppose you could use it in a classroom, but it's not really going to be easily usable by beginning students, but for people reading on their own and for more advanced students this sort of thing will certainly work. Um, this is exactly how the Loeb series is with the Latin on this side and the English on this side. And then finally, and mine happens to be the Vulgate, but I want to show you um, a critical edition. And what it is in the critical edition, and again, this is not, strictly speaking, a critical edition, but it has the features of a critical edition. There's not a lick of English anywhere on this page. 
What it has, though, is just the Latin, and there's all sorts of little annotations scattered throughout, which are really too tiny to read. And then at the bottom of the page here is some really tiny text. And what it's doing is it's saying, well, here are variants in different manuscript families. Um, this may not be... This up here is what we think the text, the best version of the text is, but here are some variants down here. And when you get into really advanced Latin study, you may be interested to know that stuff. But for the most part, you're going to be looking at you as an intermediate to advanced Latin student who's not moving on into scholarship. You're going to be looking at stuff like the Loeb series or the Fars Aeneid or the Seneca reader that I showed you. You're going to look at stuff more in that style. But again, if you're reading those, you're a fairly advanced Latin student and you're reading unadapted Latin on your own or in a class. Um, so these are the sorts of tools that are available as you progress in your Latin study. Next up, I'll cook up a short text of Latin and we'll go through it and I'll try to give you an idea of what Latin's actually like.